So now we'll start looking into the parametric technique of making drawings. So parametric technique is not new and it is used in many softwares. But in AutoCAD, it was introduced somewhere around year 2010. Now the parametric technique is a simple method in which drawings are made with the help of constraints or restrictions. Now these restrictions are applied on different mating parts. To explain this concept, I'll use a sample drawing. Now here in this drawing, we have two similar geometries. In the first case, no parameter or no constraint has been applied. But in this case, there are some constraints which are applied in between different parts of the geometries. Now in this case, if you select the geometry, you'll be able to stretch it, you will be able to modify it using these multi-function grips. Also, if I select the circle, I'll be able to modify its geometry. And all of these changes are independent of the remaining geometries. Now let's move on to this part of the geometry. In this case, if I select the geometry, the grips will be highlighted obviously. But if I try to move the geometry with any of these grips, they behave in a particular fashion. And in this case, rest of the geometry is also moving with that. It's not deforming. So I'll press Ctrl Z. And now in this case also, if you look at these two constraints, which look like dimensions, they are quite dependent on each other. Now let's say that here we have the radius one as 25 and the radius two for this arc as defined by this formula. Now they are completely dependent on each other. And if I change radius one, it will change automatically. So I'll double click on this and I'll change the radius one to 40. And now as soon as I press enter, you'll notice that the complete geometry reacted in accordance with the change. And in this case, the arc length increased and also rest of the geometry changed because the parametric constraints are applied in between different parts of the same geometry. So that's the difference between a simple geometry and a parametric geometry. Now these parameters or constraints are applied with the help of parametric tab. So I'll press Ctrl Z to get back to the original drawing. And now here, when you go to this parametric tab, you'll see all the tools which are related to this parametric technique. Now in this case, we have this geometric panel on which all the geometric constraints are listed, which are related to the geometry, obviously. And in this panel, we have the dimensional constraints, which are related to the dimensions, for example, the linear dimension, the radius, the diameter or the angle. Also, we have another panel here, which is manage panel, which will be used to add formulas and other features to the parametric drawing. So we'll learn about all of them in the upcoming videos. In this video, I will tell you about creating the parametric drawing with the help of infer constraint status bar option. So right now we have this simple drawing, which is not made with constraints and will make a copy of this drawing, but with the help of constraints or restrictions. So when you go to the status bar here, you'll see this infer constraint option. And if you are not able to see this option, then go to the customization on the end of this status bar and select this infer constraints. So that will activate the infer constraints option. Once the option is visible, click on it to activate it. Now I'll go to the line tool and click anywhere in the drawing area to start making the line. And now start by adding the length to this line. So I'll use approximate distance in this case. And also, as you can see that we have this dynamic input activated. So I'll simply deactivate it. So I'll once again, go to the customization and I'll select dynamic input and I'll turn it off. Okay. Now we have simple dimensions here. So I'll click here. And as soon as I click here, you'll notice this small box. So that's an automatic constraint, which is applied because infer constraint option is active. Now I'll move here. And once again, a new constraint has been applied. Now I'll click somewhere over here again, a new constraint, click here. And you'll notice that new constraints are automatically applied in all of these cases. And I'll join it with the initial point And now I'll press enter. So now we have these constraints applied on different points. All of these constraints have their specific purposes. For example, when I go to the first one, which is the horizontal constraint, its purpose is to keep this line always horizontal. So in this case, no matter how you change the grip, the line will always remain horizontal. And in order to show it clearly, I'll make a simple geometry, a simple line. 
and once again we have the horizontal constraint here now as the constraint is applied when you select the line and you try to change it you'll notice that you won't be able to do so even when the position of line changes it will always remain horizontal now similarly we have the second constraint which is perpendicular now i'll erase this line and i'll go to the line tool again and now i'll start with this point and i'll click here now we have the perpendicular constraint now this constraint has been applied in between this line and this line and in this case both of them will always remain perpendicular no matter what so i'll select it and i'll try to rotate it and when i do so you'll notice that it will move but it will not rotate and it will also not change its position so although the length will change and all the other geometries will change in this case but you'll notice that the relationship or the constraint which has been applied to these geometries will always remain maintained so it's still perpendicular and this line is still horizontal so in a similar way all of these constraints are applied on this collective geometry and they will always maintain their relationship with this complete geometry now we have this circle also so let's go to circle and let's make it so i'll take reference of this one and i'll reference the center point here but the midpoint is not visible so go to the object snap and turn on this midpoint now go to this point and here we have it now I'll make the circle and in this case no constraint was applied on this circle so you can freely move it and you can freely change its position its radius and all the remaining features in order to control the constraints which are applied you can go to infer constraint settings so right click on the infer constraint and go to this infer constraint setting now you'll see all the constraints that are applied currently on the geometry so depending upon the type of geometry and the type of relationship between the mating geometries these constraints are applied now if you don't want a particular type of constraint to be applied you can simply uncheck it for example here i have unchecked this horizontal and now if you select this infer constraint and if you try to apply it on a geometry it won't be applied now we have a horizontal line but the constraint is not applied now when i made this line in this way the perpendicular constraint has been applied but not the horizontal that's because the infer constraint option has this horizontal radio button off so let's click on it to turn it on and click on ok again now i'll erase both of them so that was one way of constraining these geometries and they are quite constrained now and when you select them and when you try to move them you'll notice that they will move but in accordance with the constraints which are applied on them there is also a different method of applying these constraints directly and you can apply that using auto constraint tool so go to the parametric tab and here you'll see on the geometric panel we have this auto constraint so using this auto constraint you can apply automatic constraints to multiple geometries in this case i'll select these geometries and simply press enter now you'll notice lots of constraint are applied on this in geometry and in this case also if you select the part of the geometries you'll notice that these constraints will always be maintained no matter how you change the geometry so i'll press ctrl z once again to get back to the original geometry now these constraints are not permanent you can remove them selectively simply by going to any of the constraint and then right click and select delete so that will delete the constraint and if you want to delete multiple constraints simply go on that and delete it now we don't have the coincident or the perpendicular constraint on this part of the geometry and now if i select this you'll notice that i'll be able to move it they are no longer coincident and neither they are perpendicular also when you go to any of these constraints you'll see this small cross mark so that will simply hide the constraint and it will not remove the constraint so now here both of the constraints are hidden the coincident as well as the perpendicular but in this case the relationship is still maintained so if i click on that you'll notice that still the relationship has been maintained it's still perpendicular and coincident so let's press ctrl z a couple of times and now if you want to remove constraints on lots of geometries 
instead of selecting them one by one you can use this delete constraints tool so select the delete constraint and now select the complete part of geometry from where you want to remove these constraints so i have selected them all now press enter and you'll notice that the complete constraints are now removed and now we don't have any relationship between different parts of the geometry now they will move independent of each other so that was all about infer constraint auto constraint and hiding and removing different geometric constraints in AutoCAD drawing. In this video, I will tell you about applying the geometric constraints to the geometry. And here we have the simple geometry. Now, in order to apply the geometric constraints, once again, go to the parametric tab. And now here we have this geometric panel on which we have all the tools related to the geometric constraints. Now, let's start by constraining some of the parts of this geometry here in this case we have this rectangle we have these two circular geometries one of them is arc one of them is circle and let's say that we want to keep this form of the geometry in this case we want to keep these two lines parallel and also these two lines parallel also we want to retain the perpendicular lines here and we also want all of these geometries to remain connected as they are from end to end now in order to do that I'll start with the parallel geometric constraint. So I'll go to the geometric panel and click on this parallel and now select the first set of lines. So I'll click on this one and this one. Now the parallel constraint has been applied in between both of these lines. Now let's select this line and let's move it. And you'll notice that yes, we have both of these lines parallel, but in this case, these two lines are not parallel as the constraint is not yet applied. So let's press Ctrl Z, go to the parallel and click on this set of line. And now select it and click on any of these grips and look at geometry. When I deform the geometry, the constraint will be maintained. These two are parallel and these two are always parallel. But we have a problem here. In this case, this arc is losing contact with these two endpoints. So in this case, we need to make them coincident. So let's press Ctrl Z. And now I'll go to the geometric panel again. And here we have the coincident constraint. So that will ensure that the endpoints remain connected. Now I'll go to this line and close to the point which we want to connect. And we'll see this red marker. When the marker is visible, click. Now go to the arc and once again when the marker is visible, click. Now we have this blue dot which indicates that a coincident constraint has been applied. Similarly, repeat the process for this side. So I'll go to coincident. I'll go to this horizontal line but close to this endpoint. Click on this arc close to the endpoint and we have the constraint. Now let's deform the geometry. And yes, in this case, we have the constraint maintained even though the geometry is highly deformed. But now in this case, you'll notice that the angle is not 90 degree for all of these lines. That means we need to apply a perpendicular constraint. So I'll press Ctrl Z and I'll go to this perpendicular constraint. Now click on this line and click on this line. And the constraint is now applied. Now let's click again. Let's try to deform it and yeah, we are not able to deform it. We have it fully constrained except for one thing. We are able to move this drawing. Although the consistency of the geometry is now maintained, but we don't want it to be moved to any other place. For that, we can apply fix constraint. So let's go to the fix constraint. And now I'll click on any of the vertices and that vertex will be fixed. So as that vertex is related to remaining part of the geometry, they will also remain fixed. Now I'll try to move it. And yes, we have almost constrained drawing. So even if I try to move this geometry, most of the parts are now fully constrained and I'm not able to move them. Now in this case, if you want to hide all of these constraints from your drawing area, you can simply do that by selecting this hide all option. So click on hide all and the complete constraint is now hidden. In order to bring it back, click on show all. You can also selectively show and hide these constraints. And for that, select this show hide option. Select the geometries on which the constraints are applied that you want to hide. So in this case, I'll select this line and this arc and now press enter. And now we have some options here. So we have this hide option. Let's select hide and the constraints of these two geometries are hidden. In order to bring them back, once again, click on show all. 
and the constraints will be visible. You can obviously select this cross icon so that will also hide these constraints selectively so you can click on these cross icons to hide them manually if you want. So that was all about applying the geometric constraints in your drawing. In the next video we'll learn about applying the dimensional constraint to this drawing. In this video, I will tell you about applying the dimensional constraints on the geometry. So in the previous video, we learned about applying these geometric constraints. Now we'll add some dimensional constraints. Now in this case, I'll start with this dimensional panel and here on the dimensional panel, when you expand this flyout, you'll see some constraints which are quite similar to the dimensions which we have already seen. So we have the linear, horizontal, vertical, all of these constraints. We also have the aligned, the radius, diameter, angle. So all of these constraints can be applied on the geometry. So I'll start with the linear constraint. So let's go to this linear and now move close to this end of the horizontal line. So in this case, you can see the highlighted marker. Let's click. Now let's click on the second point, which is close to the vertex. And here we have it. The linear constraint is now applied. And as you can see that it has a identifier D1, which is for distance one, obviously. And we have this constraint applied. Also the log sign indicates that it is now restricted to this length. If you want to apply a new constraint on this side, so you can do that as well. So I'll go to this vertical option and now I'll click close to this end of the vertical line. So make sure that you are clicking only on the vertical line, not on this horizontal line because we want to apply it on this one. And also make sure that you're not clicking anywhere close to this center point because in that case, another marker will be highlighted. So now I'll click close to this point and I'll click close to this point and I'll place the constraint here. So we have the horizontal and the vertical constraints now applied. In order to apply any aligned constraint, you can select this aligned option. Also, we have this option here, radius. So let's select the radius constraint and let's apply it on this arc. So I'll click here and I'll apply this radius constraint just like this. Now let's repeat the process of this radius constraint and let's apply it on this circle. So I'll click on this and let's place it somewhere over here. And we have this radius also applied here. Now in all of these cases, all of these are the constraints and you can see that they are quite different from the dimensions which you apply. Now if you want to change their shape and if you want to use dimension type of constraints, then you can change that from this flyout. So expand the dimensional panel and here you'll see this annotational constraint mode. So right now dynamic constraint mode is selected. That's why we are seeing this dynamic constraint. So I'll change it to annotational constraint. And now let's remove some of these. So I'll select this radius, I'll remove it and also remove this vertical one. Now I'll once again apply it. So I'll go to radius and click on this circle. And now here, instead of this kind of dynamic constraint, you'll be able to see the constraint which is similar to the dimension style. Although this is still a constraint, but the dimension style will be taken up in this case. Also, if you want to apply it here, let's select the vertical. Let's apply the vertical constraint. And once again, it's taking the properties of the dimension style. But still, as I mentioned, it's a constraint. In this case also, if you want to hide the constraints, you can simply select hide all for all of these dimensional constraints. And if you want to reveal them back, you can click on show all. But as you can see that we have these as annotations or the dimensions, they won't be hidden. In order to have a uniform distribution of constraints, I'll simply remove them and I'll apply the dynamic constraints instead. So I'll select the dynamic constraint mode and I'll once again apply the constraints on these geometries. So here we have the radius constraint applied and also we have here the vertical constraint. So let's apply it here and we have it now. So now when you hide the geometries, the complete constraint, the dimensional constraints will be hidden. Also, when you click on show all, they will be revealed back. And if you want to hide or show them, Selectively, you can select show, hide, select the geometries. Now press enter and select hide and the respective constraint will be hidden. To bring it back, click on show all. So that was all about the dimensional constraints in AutoCAD. 
In this video, I will tell you about the use of parameters manager and formulas in AutoCAD. So we have this simple drawing which we have made in the previous lesson and in order to apply different formulas on different parts of this geometry, we will once again go to this parametric tab. Now on this tab, we have this parameters manager here. So now click on this parameters manager and this parameters manager palette will pop up. Now here we have this list of all of these constraints the dimensional constraints which we have applied in the previous videos. Now these constraints are also available on this geometry but they are not visible. In order to show them or in order to make them visible, click on show all button on the dimensional panel. So now it will make all of these dimensional constraints visible. Now in this case you can see that this radius 2 value is close to 25.98, the radius 1 is 31, D1 is 145 and D2 is 87.37. So now all of these are independent values, they are not dependent on each other but we can make them dependent. So we'll start by adding our own parameters and then we'll add different formulas to make these dimensions dependent on each other. I'll explain it here in this parameters manager. So here on the parameters manager, click on this FX icon. Now this will add this new user parameters. Now here type area and that will be the name of our new parameter. Now we have an expression value here which is set to 1. So let's click on this and now let's type the expression value and we'll use the area of this circle which is this one. So in this case, I'll type pi multiplied by radius, which is radius two. And that's the name of this parameter here or this dimension here. This radius is known with the name of radius two. That's why I'm entering radius two. And then this caret sign. So this caret sign is available on your keyboard. So when you press and hold shift key and press the six key on the number bar, you'll see this caret sign. Now after that type two. So this formula indicates pi r square. So here we have this pi multiplied by which is indicated by this star mark radius two, which is this radius and the square is indicated by this caret sign. Now radius to the power two. Now once this is done, simply press enter and now you will see the final result here. So the area of this circle can be seen here in the value. So now we have one of the parameters defined. Now let's define another parameter which is area of this complete rectangle. Although in this case we have this part of rectangle missing but let's assume that we want the complete rectangular area. For that I'll click on this FX again and I'll add R area that is for rectangle area. And now the rectangle area will be equal to length multiplied by width. So that will be simply D1 multiplied by D2. So here I'll click in this expression column and now I'll type D1 multiplied by D2 and simply press enter and we have the final result here. So now we have the area of circle and the area of rectangle. Let's use these values and let's apply them on this geometry. So now the first thing that I'll change in this case is this D2 value. In this case, let's say that we want to keep D2 value always half of the D1 value. For that, go to this D2 here and here we have this expression. Let's double click here and let's change it to D1 by 2 and now press enter. And as soon as you'll do this, you'll notice that the value changes here also and also the geometry will respond in an appropriate way. Now the value of this length will decide the value of this width in this rectangle. Also we have this radius value. Now let's use this radius value to decide the length of this rectangle. And in this case, I'll simply go to this D1 value, double click on this and I'll type 5 multiplied by radius 2 and now press enter. So now the length of this rectangle will always remain 5 times that of this radius value. Now our geometry is getting a little bit deformed. So in order to make it appropriate, I'll change this radius value. So I'll double click on this radius and I'll change this value to 24 and press enter. Now with respect to the size of this rectangle, the circle is still very large. So I'll change one more parameter here. In this D1, I'll change this 5 to 8 and now 
press enter now we have an appropriate rectangle so now the d1 length is always equal to 8 times that of radius okay so now we have most of these parameters applied on this geometry and now you can simply see how these values are connected with each other in this case if i change the value of this radius this will change the value of length because it is dependent on that as you can see that d1 is equal to 8 times of radius 2 and when this length changes it will change the length of this line here or the width of this rectangle because d2 is always equal to half of d1 which is this one so changing a single parameter will change all of these values using this parameters manager now in this case you can see that we have not applied any formula on this case now if you want to apply any of these formulas you can do that as well and for changing the value of this radius will use these user parameters so we have defined these two parameters now let's say that we want to keep radius of this circle always equal to 100th time of this area for that i'll simply go to this radius value the radius one and now let's type area by 100 and now press enter and now you'll notice that the radius will change appropriately and in this case the radius will always remain 100th time the area of this circle so now they are completely dependent on each other now in this case if you want to add more formulas if you want to make it even more complex you can add that also for example let's now double click on this and let's increase this radius value to twice of its original so in this case i'll add this bracket along this complete formula and now i'll add two and add this star mark so that will make the complete radius twice of the value which we have already assigned now press enter and here we have it so in this case 100 time of the area of that circle multiplied by 2 is equal to the radius of this circle so that's a little bit complicated formula but yes you can apply these formulas and even more complicated formula that involves logarithmic or trigonometric values also using this parameters manager So here we have the question related to this module. Now here we need to make a rectangle with length 10 unit and width of 5 unit. Now make a circle with radius 1.6 unit and make it at the center of the rectangle. Now add constraints to this geometry in such a way that the width of rectangle always remains half of the length of rectangle and also the constraint should be applied to keep the circle at the geometric center of the complete rectangle. In this case, assume that the lower left corner of the rectangle is fixed. So here we have the blank drawing. Let's start by adding the rectangle. So I'll go to draw panel, expand the flyout, select rectangle, click at a point, now type at 10 comma 5 and press enter now we need to add the circle at the geometric center so go to circle and now go to this point but don't click and drag it here also you can go to this point then drag it and click on the geometric center although in this case i directly have the geometric center snap but if you don't have that you can use this object snap tracking option now enter a radius of 1.6 unit and press enter so there we have it the geometry is now prepared now let's start by adding the constraints and for that i'll go to this parametric tab now here we have the linear constraint and, and align so i'll select this linear now click close to this endpoint and then click close to this endpoint and apply the constraint so there we have it the 10 unit length now go to linear again click close to this endpoint click close to this endpoint and apply it here okay so we have applied the linear constraints but we need to ensure that this rectangle remains like a rectangle and for that we need to add parallel constraints also so i'll go to geometric and i'll select this parallel constraint now select these two lines and there we have it now repeat the process for the vertical lines so i'll select these two and there we have it now we need to add one more constraint to constrain this circle at the center and for that i'll select the linear again i'll click on this circle and that will select the center now 
click on this point but in this case make sure that this center point is highlighted and there we have it so right now all of these constraints are added but still they are not dependent on each other so in order to make the dependency as per our question we need to add formulas so the first requirement was the width and the width should always remain half of length so in this case you can see that the length is d1 parameter so the d2 parameter should be half of that so i'll double click on this and i'll change this value from 5 to d1 by 2 and press enter so apparently it will not make any change in the geometry but now if you change the length here it will automatically change the width similarly in this case you need to ensure that this d3 value remains always half of this d1 value or you can also say that this value this d3 value should also remain equal to d2 value so i'll simply double click here and i'll change this value to d2 okay so there we have it now we have these three parameters defined we only have one parameter which is the fixed parameter that should be defined for this point so i'll go to this fix geometric constraint click on this point now we have it defined as per our question now let's check it so i'll double click on this and i'll change its length to 16 and press enter and there we have it now in this case the length changed the width and the width changed the distance between the center of the circle and one of its vertical lines and all the constraints are properly maintained so let's get started with the dynamic block tool of autocad so dynamic blocks are more advanced type of blocks in which you can change their shape size and their geometries using a set of rules or parameters even after inserting those block references in your drawing now as an example i'll show you some dynamic blocks first which we will make in this module so here in this first example we have this road sign block and as of now you'll find it as a simple standalone object but when you click on this object you'll see the base point or the base grip which is always present for a block reference and also we have an additional grip now using this grip we can change the appearance now here if i change it to u-turn the block will change in this way if I click on this grip and change it to stop, it will change in this way. Now, this is still a single block, but we can change its properties even after inserting this block reference in our drawing. Now, here is another example. In this case, we have this sink and here we have the base point and an additional grip. So when we click on this grip, we'll be able to stretch it or contract it to some particular distances. So that's a dynamic block. There is another form of this block here in example 3. In this case, we have a list and from this list, we can change the block size. So I'll click on this and the block size changed. Similarly, we have these different sizes which are available for this block. So throughout this module, we'll learn to make these blocks and also lots of other blocks with dynamic properties using the rules, parameters and actions. So the dynamic blocks can be made in the block editor environment and the block editor is accessible only after creating a block. So here we have this simple object. We'll first convert it into a block and then we'll open it in a block editor to access the tools which are required for creating a dynamic block. So in order to convert it into a simple block, I'll click on this create block and you're already aware of these steps so i'll just name it so i'll type sofa and now i'll click on pick point and in this case i'll select this lower left point as the pick point now i'll click on select objects and i'll select all of these objects and press enter now we have this allow exploding option checked and in this case make sure this open in block editor is checked so this will directly open the block in block editor environment where we can modify this block so now i'll click on ok and we have the block here but it's open in block editor so it's still behaving as if it's a normal object now in this block editor environment we have this block authoring palettes and on this palette we have these different tabs now these tabs will be used for creating our dynamic block and here we have the parameters which will be used 
in our dynamic block we have the actions which are always accompanied with parameters but not in all of the cases there are some actions which don't require any parameter and we have this parameter set which is a combination of actions and parameters and also we have the constraints which we have already seen and we can use these constraints to make our own dynamic block now these constraints are also available here on the panel so we have the geometric constraints the dimensional constraints and if for any reason you are not able to find this block authoring palettes for example let's say that we don't have it here i'll close it now in that case you can bring it again by clicking on this authoring palettes tool from the manage panel here we have it so once you are done with this block editor window click on close block editor and here we have our block so this was an introduction to the dynamic block and some examples of the dynamic blocks in this video we will convert this block into a dynamic block and with some dynamic properties for that we need to go to the block editor environment so i'll select the block right click and select block editor now here the objects will behave like normal entities normal line arc and circle and we can modify it so we'll convert this block into a dynamic block so that the length of this sofa can be increased in both the directions and also we don't want base point to be here we want it to be here at the center so i'll go to this parameters tab and now select the first parameter which is base point and now click at this point so now the base point has been changed now let's go to this linear parameter and now click at the first point and then click on the second point here and click at any point to place this placeholder and now here we have this distance one parameter now you'll notice this exclamation sign which indicates that we still have an action to apply to this parameter and to apply the action we need to go to this actions tab now obviously we want this length to be increased in either direction so for that we can select this stretch action so let's select this stretch action and now look at the command line which prompts you to select the parameter which is this distance one parameter let's select it now specify a point to associate it so we can select either this point or this one so i'll select this one for now and now specify the first point of the frame so we'll make a crossing window just like this we'll make this frame and we'll make it long enough to enclose the areas as i'm showing here so now click at this point and now we need to select the objects so once again make another frame and make sure that all of these objects including the parameter is included in our selection set and now press enter so here we have it the stretch action is now added but we still have the exclamation sign which indicates that one more action is required so i'll go to this stretch action once again and i'll select the distance one parameter now select this point and once again make a frame here and this should also include the same objects as we did in the previous case and once again make a crossing window to include all of these objects like this and in this case also i've included this distance one parameter now press enter and here we have it now the block is prepared and we can test this block directly using this test block option so let's click on this test block option in the block editor and now here we have this test window so let's click on it and we have these two grips now click on this grip and yes we are able to stretch it now select this grip and yes we are able to stretch it in this direction as well so now let's click on this close test block and we can save the block and close this block editor as well and here we have it now we can remove this instance of the block and we can insert a new reference and when you select this reference you'll notice that the base point has changed and also we have these grips which can be used to modify the length of this sofa as per a requirement and here we have it our first block is now prepared so i'll start with this simple drawing and in this case we have it as a normal drawing objects it's not a block we will convert it into a simple dynamic block so for that i'll go to this create block icon 
and now give it a name so let's name it as sync and now select the pick point and in this case i'll select this one as the pick point the midpoint of this line and now select the objects and select this complete object and press enter now make sure this allow exploding is checked and also this open in block editor is checked and click on ok now a block will open in block editor and now we can add different parameters and actions so i'll start with the parameters and i'll once again add the linear parameter which we have added in the previous lesson also so i'll click on this midpoint and i'll click on this midpoint and i'll specify a location for this parameter now we need to add actions to this parameter for that i'll go to this actions tab select the stretch action now select the parameter and now select the point to which you want to associate it and this will be the point now specify the first corner of the frame and include all of these objects now make sure that this central part of this sink is also included and let's click here and now once again make a crossing window to select the same objects just like this and press enter now go to stretch action again and select the same parameter and this time you specify this as the parameter point and now click on this point somewhere at this point and make another window and now again click at this point and make another crossing window just like this and press enter now we have our block defined now let's test it so i'll click on this test block and now when you click on this block you'll notice that we have these two grips and using these grips we can increase its length on either of its side but in this case if you'll notice the block can be stretched asymmetrically and the center of this sink is now moving according to the grip so in order to resolve this problem we can redefine this block so i'll close this test block window and now i'll select this distance one parameter now right click select properties and now go to this miscellaneous panel and from this base location select midpoint and now close this property panel and once again go to this test block now let's select this block again and now let's stretch it and now you'll notice that we are able to stretch the block in both the directions using a single grip obviously and also the center of this block or the sink is fixed in this case now let's close this test block window and now we can add an increment value also to this block so in this case we are able to uniformly add this block add length to this block but if you want to allow some increment value for example if you want this block to increase in length by a value of 10 units then you can also do that and for that once again i'll go to this distance one parameter and i'll go to properties now scroll down this list and from this distance type select list and now you can see that here we have some random value in the distance value so click here and click on this small icon and now we have the default value applied here so let's change it to 800 and let's add it let's add 850 and let's add 900 also and click on ok now let's close it and let's test the block now let's select it again and now when you click on this grip you'll notice that we can only stretch it to an increment value of these distances which we have already applied which is at a 50 unit interval so we can only stretch it at an interval of 50 units now in this case also you can see that stretching on either side of the block will stretch it on the other side so we can remove one of the grips from this block so for that i'll again close this test block and i'll select this distance parameter and now go to properties scroll it down and from this number of grips i'll change it to one and also in this distance type i'll change this list to increment and now i'll change the increment value so in this case i'll change the increment value to 200 and now the size of block will increase at an interval of 200 units and that you can see with these markers
Now, if you want to specify a maximum length that can be allowed, you can also add that value here. So I'll add a maximum value of 1200 units and now press tab key and let's close it. And now once again, go to this test block and now select the block. And now you'll notice that we only have a single grip. And when you click on this grip, we have these many increment points, which is stretching the block by a 200 unit distance. And that's the maximum distance of 1200, which is allowed according to the property of this parameter. So now let's close this test block window. And also let's save the block and close block editor. And here we have the final dynamic block with the applied properties. In this video, I will tell you about point and rotation parameters. So here we have this block and it's basically a simple floor plan of a single room. And I'll select this block, then right click and go to this block editor option. Now in this block editor, go to this parameters tab and select this point option. So using this point option, we can move any block or any content of this block independently from its parent block. So let's say that in this complete block, we want this computer panel to move independently. For that, I'll just select the point parameter and I'll click at any point here and now click to place this placeholder. And now we need to associate it with an action. So I'll go to actions and I'll select this move action. Now we need to select the parameter, which is this position one parameter. Now we need to select the object. So obviously the object is this complete computer set along with this parameter and now press enter. And here we have it. Now we can move this computer set independently of this parent block and we can test it also. So let's go to this test block and now select the block and you'll see that we have an additional grip here and using this grip we can now move it anywhere in this block now we have one more thing to add here we can also add a rotation parameter so as to align it to any angle or to any direction and for that i'll close this test block window and once again i'll go to this parameter and now select this rotation parameter so now click at anywhere in the drawing area to specify the base point of rotation. So the point which you will click now will become the base point or the point which remains fixed while rotating the object. So in this case, I'm selecting this midpoint as the base point and now specify the radius of parameter. So in this case, let's take this point as the radius and now directly press enter. Now again, we need to go to actions and select the rotate action. Now select this angle one parameter and now select objects and in this case the object will be this angle one parameter this complete set of object and also this position one parameter and now press enter and we have it here now we can test the block so let's go to this test block and select this block completely and now you'll notice that we have an additional grip for rotation along with this move grip. So let's click on this move grip or the position grip and let's move it here and we can easily move it. And now we can rotate it as well. But in this case, it will rotate with respect to the original base point. So I'll click at this point and now you can see that it's rotating, but with respect to the original base point, just like this. So we can move it back to the original position and now we can rotate it from this grip and after rotating we can move it to the desired position wherever we want it just like this so now let's press escape key and let's now close this test block window so now we saw that when we move the object the rotation parameter did not move with it and if you want to move the rotation parameter along with the object, then you can add it as well in the position one parameter set or the position one action set. So for that, you need to select this action, the move action, and then right click and select this action selection set. And now select the modify selection set option. And now once again, select the objects. And in this case, we want to add one more parameter, which is this angle parameter. So let's select it and press enter and we have it modified. Now let's go to test block again and now test it. So select it and now we'll move it first 
and now you'll notice that this rotation grip also moves along with this object so now we can rotate it and after rotating the move grip is also following the main object and we can now move it and place it wherever required just like this so now let's go to this close test block and let's close it so in this way we can add position as well as rotation parameter to our dynamic block so we'll create the dynamic block but with the help of geometrical and dimensional constraints so i've made this drawing here and it's a simple rectangle and a circle the rectangle has been filleted at all of these four edges and now we'll convert it into a dynamic block for that i'll go to this create block tool and now give it a name so let's name it as test block and now select the pick point which is the center point in this case now select objects and select all of them press enter now make sure allow exploding is checked and also open in block editor is checked and click on ok so now here we have it the object is now open in the block editor and now we will add required constraints to convert it into a dynamic block so in this case we want this block to be converted into a dynamic block in such a way so that the length of this complete rectangle can be increased without changing any other parameter including the fillets at the corner now for that we can go to this constraints tab and here you'll see some of these geometric constraints and also these dimensional constraints now these geometric constraints can be seen here also and the dimensional constraints can be found here so you can use either the panel or the tab for accessing the tools so i'll now start by adding the align constraint from this dimensional panel so i'll select this aligned and now move your cursor close to this midpoint and you will see this marker the red marker when it is close to the midpoint of this rectangle click and now move it close to this point and click again and click at a point to place it and now you notice that we have the very familiar grip here now let's go and test the block so I'll go to this test block now select the rectangle click on this grip and we have a problem here now the geometry is getting completely distorted and we are not getting the results which is required that simply mean we need to add additional constraints or additional restrictions so I'll close this test block window and now in order to constrain the shape of this geometry we need to add some geometric constraints and that can be done directly using this auto constraint so select this auto constraint select the complete geometry and press enter and we have constraints applied to all of the required sides now let's go and test the block again and here we have it now the block works as per our requirement so now let's go and close this test block window so you have a block that does not require lots of parameters or actions you can use this geometric constraint or the dimensional constraint as well for creating simple dynamic blocks in the previous lesson we made this simple dynamic block and we can modify this block the length of this block essentially by changing it with this grip now when we change the length of this block the center becomes off centric and now it's not centered with respect to the complete geometry now in order to keep this centered we need to modify this block additionally so I'll select this block then right click and select block editor now here in block editor we need to add one more constraint and that will be the aligned constraint once again so I'll select this aligned constraint and now select the circle so now when you select the circle you'll notice this grip at the center of this circle or the marker at the center and now go to this vertical line and make sure that this time marker appears at the center which is not the case so I'll move it and now I'll select it here now we can see the marker at the center so let's click and now place this constraint so now you can see that the length in between these two points is five units obviously we don't want this length for other geometries also so when we stretch this rectangle the length will also change but in this case if you keep it that way the length will not change although the total length will change so to make this clear I'll just modify this value and I'll change it to d1 by 2 so let's type here d1 
by 2. Now in this way we can restrict the length of this d2 value or the distance between these two points always equal to half of d1 which is this total length or the length of rectangle. Now click outside to accept the values and now let's go and test the block. So I'll go to this test block. Now select this rectangle and now let's move it. Now you can see that the circle is always centered no matter how you change the length. Now we can apply one more constraint and here you can see that the circle is moving along with the length of this rectangle. Now what if we want the circle to remain fixed at its position and we want to stretch this block in either direction. So for that we need to modify it additionally. So let's now move back to block editor and now I'll go to this constraints tab, select this fix constraint and now apply it on the center of this circle. So click on the circle and the constraint is now applied. Now let's go to this test block again. Now select it and now move it. And now you'll notice that the circle will always remain fixed and the length can be changed in either direction in this way. So in this way you can also make your blocks with the help of constraints. So I'll once again close this test block and now I'll also close this block editor by saving the changes. And here we have it, the final block as per our requirement. So here we have these three drawings and these are basically road signs and we have them as simple drawing objects. They are not blocks. We'll first convert them into block and then we'll use the visibility parameter. So for converting them into block, click on this create block icon and now give it a name. So I'll name the first block as U-turn. Now select pick point and click anywhere in the drawing area to select the pick point. Now select objects and select the complete set of object here just like this and press enter. Now make sure allow exploding is checked and also make sure that open in block editor is unchecked and click on OK. So now our first block is ready. Let's click on create block again and let's now name it as stop and click on this pick point and select this pick point. Now select object and select all the objects of this stop sign and press enter. And now once again here also allow exploding should be checked and open in block editor should be unchecked and click on OK. Now once again click on create block and give it a name and I'll name it as speed limit. Now select this pick point and select the center here as the pick point. Now click on select objects and select all of these objects and press enter. And here also I'll select this allow exploding checkbox and uncheck this open in block editor and click on OK. So now all the three blocks are ready and we'll now convert them into a single dynamic block. So in order to do that, once again, go to this create block and now give it a name. So I'll name it as road sign. Select this pick point and click on the center of this block. Now click on select objects and select all of these objects, press enter. Now make sure allow exploding is checked and also make sure open in block editor is checked this time. And now click on OK. So now here we have these three blocks. Now let's overlap these blocks over one another and with their base points. So here we have it. Now select it and from this base point move it to this point here. Okay, so now we have these overlapping blocks and we will now apply visibility parameter so that only one block is visible at a time. So for that, go to this parameters tab, select this visibility parameter and click at a point to place it just about there. Now, obviously we need to add an action. So go to action tab and here you will not find any action associated with the visibility parameter. Actually, the action related to visibility parameter is available here and we can add it from this panel. So click on this visibility states and the default visibility state will become visible, which is visibility state zero. So let's now rename it. So click on rename and rename it to U-turn. Now click on new again and this time name it as stop and click on new again and name it as speed limit and click on OK. So now we have these three visibility states. Let's click on OK.
Okay, so we have added the three visibility states and these states are present here. So you can change the visibility states from the drop down. But as of now, it's not changing anything here in the block. So in order to make the change, we need to hide some of the blocks which are not required for a particular visibility states. So let's go to this U turn state first. And now here we have this hide and unhide or show and hide options. So I'll first select this make invisible or hide option. So click on this make invisible and now click on the blocks which should remain invisible in this U-turn. So that should be all the blocks except the U-turn block. So let's click on this speed limit block and here in this case you can see that we have some overlapping objects. So the selection may be a little bit difficult. So in order to ease this process you can turn on this selection cycling option. And if you are not seeing this selection cycling option on the status bar go to this customization and select this selection cycling. So this should be checked and then you'll find this option here. So turn it on. Now when you go to this option whenever an overlapping object appears a list containing all of this object will become visible just like this and now you can easily select all the overlapping objects in this case we need to select the first one and press enter now go to make invisible again and select this stop sign and press enter so now all the blocks which are not required for this visibility state are hidden so let's now change the visibility state to stop and in this case we need to hide all the blocks except the stop sign so once again go to this make invisible and click on this u-turn and hide it now go to this make invisible and click on this eight letter so that this speed limit can be selected easily and hide it okay now let's go to the last visibility state which is a speed limit and in this case we need to hide every block except the speed limit so select this make invisible option and click on this u-turn press enter select it again and this time select the stop sign and press enter so now here we have it now let's test it let's go to this u-turn let's go to stop and speed limit and yes it's working so let's now save the block and close block editor and here we have the block so we can now test this block as well so let's click on this grip we have this u-turn let's go to stop and yes we have this stop sign and when you click here again go to speed limit we have the speed limit sign so now in this way we have easily added the visibility parameter to our dynamic block so in this video we will have a look at the block tables and we'll use this dynamic block which we have made in the previous lessons for explaining the lesson now let's select the block and right click and go to block editor now here you'll notice that we have this simple sync drawing and we have this distance one parameter here now let's add some increment value to this parameter so that the block can be stretched to certain specific values only and for that we can select the distance one parameter then right click and go to properties now here in the properties panel scroll it down and you'll see here in the value set the distance type which is set to none so let's click it and select list and now we have the current distance is specified here which is 762 unit between these two endpoints so now let's add more values to this list and for that i'll click on this small icon and now add more values here so we have 762 already added so let's now add 850 click on add let's add 1060 let's add it and let's add 1600 as the fourth value so as you can see that i am adding these values very randomly they are not added at any specified interval so once you have added these values click on ok and now as soon as you select ok you'll notice that there will be these markers at the specific intervals and now let's close this properties panel and let's test the block so now click on this block and when you click on this grip you'll notice that we can now stretch this block only to these specified values and we cannot stretch it to any other values but in this case we don't have any visual clue as to what the length of these specific values is so in order to add any visual clue or a list that represents the length of these increments we can use block table so let me just explain it 
with the correct example here so i'll close this test block window and now select this block table so you can select the block table from this dimensional panel or you can also select it from this actions tab and block properties table so i'll select this block table from here and now click at a point to specify the action and now here it will prompt you to specify number of grips which should be one so directly press enter now once you press enter you'll see this block properties table and here select this add properties and it will indicate the parameters which are already added which is distance one the linear type parameter which is here so select it click on ok now we have this distance one parameter and we need to add the values which we want to see in this parameter or in this list so click here and you'll see this drop down let's select the value which is 762 the original one then click on the second row select the second value select the third row third value and the final row and the final value so now we have added all the four values let's click on ok and here we have it the block table is now added so let's now test the block so click on this test block now select it and now we have this down pointing grip let's select it and now we have the visual clue as well so now we can simply see the distances or the distance between these two endpoints which is 762 in the first case 850 in the second 1060 and 1600 so this is another method of adding increment values or a list of values to the existing dynamic block now in this case also you can use this grip to change the values obviously this grip will always be there but if you want to hide this grip for whatever reasons you can do that as well so let's now close this test block and now let's say that we want to hide this grip because it's obviously of no use when we have this block table so let's select this distance one parameter then right click go to properties now scroll it down and here you'll see number of grips which is one in this case so let's change this value to zero and now we don't have any grip don't delete this distance one parameter because if you delete the distance one parameter the block table will lose its importance because it's pulling all of its data from this distance one parameter so you can only change the number of grips but you cannot delete the parameter in this case so now let's click on this close icon and now let's test the block once again now select the block and this time we only have this grip and we can change the values directly from this grip so let's now close this test block and let's close the block editor and save the changes in our block so now we have seen lots of parameters and actions in the dynamic block and they were fairly simple now let's look at a little bit complicated action so here we have this block a simple block and we have made this with the name table set here now we have inserted a copy of this block here and you can see that it's a mirror image of this original block now we want to make a dynamic block in such a way so that a copy or an array of this complete set can be made in horizontal as well as in vertical direction at certain intervals so for that go to this create block and now give it a name so I'll name it as array set and select a pick point which will be this point in this case now select object and select both of these objects press enter now make sure allow exploding is checked and also make sure open in block editor is checked now click on ok so here we have these two blocks the first and the second one now go to this parameters and select this x y parameter now specify the first point for the x parameter and now you'll notice that we can directly specify the x and y coordinates of the endpoint which we can dynamically click at this drawing area and specify or we can also enter this coordinate with the help of coordinate values so i'll do that so i'll type at 2000 for the x coordinate value and minus 2300 for the y value we are entering a negative value for y direction because it's pointing downwards and also we have added an add sign to add an incremental or a relative value so let's now press enter and here we have it now this is the point which we have specified with 2000 as x and 2300 as y so now let's go to this actions 
and now select this array action now we need to select the parameter which is this parameter so click here and now we need to select the objects which is these two objects and we also need to ensure that this parameter is selected here and now press enter so now we need to specify the distance between rows which is 2300 in this case and the distance between column which is 2000 in this case and now press enter and we have this block here so now let's test it and in order to test this click on this test block and now click on this block and now we have these additional grips here so using these grips you can add the array or the copies of this original object so let's click on this grip and move it on the right side and you'll notice that at an interval of 2000 unit a new block is added and you can click at any point to place it also when you click on this grip or when you click on this grip you can add multiple rows at a distance of 2300 as we have already specified here in order to add rows and columns directly you can use the third grip which is this one so using this grip you can not only add the rows but you can also add the columns like this so in this way you can add array action to the dynamic block so let's now close this test block window and let's save the block and close the block editor and here we have the final block which can be now used here just like this so here is our question related to the module now we need to make a dynamic block with this sync drawing and this dynamic block should be made in such a way that its length can be increased to an increment value of three inches in either direction and the center of this dynamic block should be fixed also ensure that the increment with which this block can be stretched is three inches and the maximum length of this block goes to 25 inches and the minimum remains at 9 inches. To start making this block, I'll go to this create block and I'll select a name. So let's name it as sync and now click on pick point. Now I'll select this point, the middle point as the pick point and as you can see that I'm not able to select it because object snap is off. So I'll go to object snap and I'll select midpoint. Also I have this dynamic input selected which I don't want. So I'll go to this customization, select dynamic input and turn it off. Now I'll go to this point. Now I'll click on select objects and select all of it and press enter. Now make sure allow exploding is checked. And also open in block editor is checked because we want to make more modifications in this now click on ok so here it is a block in this block editor environment now i'll start by adding linear parameter so here on the parameters tab we have this linear so select this linear click on the first point here the midpoint and the second point here and place it somewhere over here here also we can turn off this dynamic mode and now go to actions now we'll apply this stretch action so for this select the distance one parameter and now click on the point here now make the stretch frame so i'll make this stretch frame to include the circle and most of these objects now make a selection of objects so once again i'll click on this point and select it in such a way that the circle and the parameter are all included now press enter so one of the actions are added we need to add one more action for the second side so i'll select stretch again click on this parameter now select this point and this time i'll click at this point and i'll once again make this frame just like this once again click somewhere over here and make this frame and press enter there we have it so now we have made this we can test the block so click on test block click on it we have the grips so we can stretch it but the center point is not fixed and also the increments are not added so we need to fix these two properties so i'll click on close test block and i'll select distance one parameter now right click and select properties now here we have this properties palette 
we can now change the properties so i'll simply scroll it down here and let's expand this property palette a little bit so here in this case you'll see the distance type is set to none select it and change it to increment and we want an increment value of three inches so type three inches in this and here the minimum value should be nine inches and the maximum should be 25 inches so there we have it now also the base location should be the midpoint so here change it to midpoint now we have all the values set so let's close it let's test the block so once again i'll select it click on any of these grips and yes now we can increase it with an increment of three inches and also the center remains fixed in these cases so there we have it the final dynamic block so let's now close it let's save the block and close the block editor and here we have the final dynamic block according to the requirement so now let's get started with the paper space or the layout views so up to this point we have made all of our drawings in the model space and model space is generally used for creating the drawings but layout space is reserved for creating our plot settings and for creating drawings which are to be plotted so here we have these three drawings in the model space the floor plan the east elevation and the front elevation now in order to move to the layout view you can go to the tab and when the cursor goes there it will show the layout tab so here we have this layout one and layout two so these are the default layouts which are already present so you can switch to any of them simply by clicking on it or you can also go to this bottom side and here on the bottom left you'll see this layout one tab layout two tab and also the model tab so you can switch in between model and layout views using these tabs now these tabs are generally visible by default but if you are not able to see these tabs you can go to the view tab here and you can activate this layout tabs option so if this option is not active the tabs will not be visible here so you can click on it to make them visible now i'll go back to the home tab 